It's clear that people aren't really aware of all of the cool new restaurants, spaces, and happenings going on in town, both here in Denver and just around the state. That's clearly because of COVID and maybe, just maybe a little bit because of apathy on the part of respondents to the 5280 top of the town list. I feel like it's deja vu all over again. 5280 does a fantastic job of sharing new places, people, and just cool things to do. So it really baffles me to see a list every single year where people are clearly not going to the unique spaces and places that automatically stand out to me. I find myself asking how we can encourage reader action and interaction to support the businesses and organizations shared throughout the year by 5280 Magazine. Lack of diversity specific to companies of color and other marginalized communities always stands out to me when I see the finalized list. This is really frustrating and unfortunate because the publicity from being on that list is huge. Those organizations, companies, and services end up getting new clientele and free publicity, which goes a long way, especially nowadays. The easiest way to address this issue I could think of a couple of things. First, just create a couple of new categories that address this issue. Categories such as top new POC owned business, top LGBTQ business or space, most inclusive spot in Denver, or most unique new art space, which obviously would be Meow Wolf because it's opening soon. There's a whole bunch of other categories that the 5280 staff could dream up. Those are just a few that I thought of right away. Then there's how this list and bracket is announced. Perhaps do some more cross-posting with different businesses, like on their social media platforms, prior to the announcement, announcement of the actual lists to drum up enthusiasm and awareness. I want to challenge the staff to become tourists in the towns and cities that we live in. I feel like and I felt this way for the last couple of years. Sometimes I just feel like, do you live here or do we live such different lives that how I experience Denver is just never going to be reflected in a list like this? The 5280 top of the town list also highlights how we experience a place differently. If you're listening to the show, I encourage you to support the businesses shared on both the list I'm going to share with you in the show notes for this episode, but also the list that 5280 already shared. I took some liberties with the list that I created and shared below. A few of the spaces did open up after the top of the town list was curated. So I do want to be candid about that, but the whole idea is this is the list I would love to see that I never get to see. It's indicative of just trying harder to be here. And I basically am asking you fellow Coloradans to try hard to be here. Now, again, we had COVID. We've been dealing with that. The pandemic obviously impacts our ability to move around and where we want to go. But this was an issue that I was noticing prior to the pandemic. I'm just bringing it up now because there's a huge opportunity moving forward. Colorado but can't keep up with all the changes? Or are you thinking about visiting Colorado sometime soon? If you're looking for fun activities, local businesses to support, and would like to hear about what's happening in Colorado, make sure to sign up for the Addicted to Square State newsletter today. If you're a Colorado local business or organization looking to tell your brand story, become a sponsor of the Square State podcast today. Why would a Square State Colorado podcast sponsorship be a great way to advertise your business? Listeners are from Colorado or looking to visit. The shows are live for years, giving you incredible bang for your buck over time. Podcast listeners pod binge. Basically, that means once they listen to one show, they listen to them all. Podcast listeners are also a a captive audience who are much more likely to take a suggested action than random flyering or one-off ad advertisements around town. 
If you're interested, make sure to email me today at squarestateco at gmail.com for more information. In case you didn't get a chance to listen to a previous episode, I want to share it with you. The Digital Green Book is an incredible resource developed here in Denver. If you're looking to ensure that you're in a safe in that you're in safe spaces, whether you're a person of color, have a physical disability, or are a part of the LGBTQ community, my guests Charnel and Parker tell me all about their product and their project, the Digital Green Book, which is a spin off of the historical Green Book developed to help and aid travelers of color as they made their way across the United States. Make sure to go to episode 41 to listen to that episode. And I also do share a link in the show notes as well. I know that it may seem like I'm pushing the 5280 crew a little hard, but um, real talk, I kind of am. I want people who are curating content in the travel and location-based spaces to really rethink, think outside of the box as we come out of the pandemic and as we start to manage just living in a world (laughs) where it seems like this damn thing is not going away as quickly as we would like. And so what that means is these businesses are really under duress all the time, these small businesses that make our state so wonderful. But if I keep hearing about the same businesses over and over again as a local, that impacts my knowledge of all these other places we can go. If I'm a travel blogger, actually, from outside of Colorado, I'm going to look at these lists and that's all of my frame of reference for Denver, for Boulder, for wherever we are traveling throughout the state. There's a reason why people love watching TikTok videos and other travel-based content curated on the spot and in real time because it's a lot more relevant. Do you even know, listeners, about the Dairy Block development or Milk Market or McGregor Square or Plaza? I always want to call it Plaza that opened in May or Milk Market and the Dairy Block development, which people still tell me they haven't been to or Junction Food and Drink, which is a really cool food hall on the the south side of town at the 40th and Colorado Boulevard light rail stop. You just get off the light rail right there, go up the stairs and you're right there by the movie theater and junction food and drink. My point in making this episode is to say that a lot has changed during the last almost two years. A lot of businesses have closed. A lot of businesses are making accommodations because They have to, they can't operate in the same way. A lot of businesses had things happen to them like fires or vandalism. I'm just saying that I need us to try more. And if that means calling out 5280, which is a magazine and a resource, I literally, I love you guys. So I just want you to do better. And it doesn't mean that you, you aren't great now. It just means that just like with everyone and myself included, there's room to grow and to do things differently. And this is that moment now. So with that in mind, actually, you know what? As I was talking about this, I'm gonna read through my list. That would be my list for the 5280 top of the town for 2021. So this is the list I created. You can also refer to it in the show notes as well. There's, uh, I wanna say five different sections, culture and nightlife, dining, shopping, sports, outdoors, and fitness, and then there's services. So I'm going to blaze through this. Okay. For culture and nightlife, I want to shout out all of the really cool pop-up events that keep coming through Denver and other parts of the Metro. These pop-up events are so cool. Two in particular that stand out that many of us have tickets for Van Gogh, any of the Van Gogh experiences, there's two of them. And then the Alice in Wonderland immersive cocktail experience just looks cool. Patio to enjoy, Steam Coffee, the Platte Park location. Steam, by the way, just opened up a new location in the Highlands neighborhood. I'm obsessed with it. I love it so much. It's so beautiful. 
So definitely make sure you go to Steen's website to check out where that secondary location is. You need to support it. It's amazing. New breweries, Lady Justice. I did agree with 5280 on that. Happy Hours. There are two that stood out. Ace, Eat, and Serve. You can play ping pong there. And then number 38. Again, this is a new uh, facility. I don't know that a lot of people know about it unless you live in the Five Points backslash Rhino neighborhood, but check out number 38. New Farmer's Market. This one is the best farmer's market, I think, in town right now. City Park Farmer's Market. It actually pushed South Pearl Street, which I love. I love South Pearl Street Farmer's Market so much, but I actually like City Park Farmer's Market a little more. And the reason why is this. They have a yoga class, which I think is awesome. And it's pay what you can. It's suggested $10, but say, for example, you don't have that, you just pay what you can. The other thing that really stood out to me at the City Park Farmer's Market, besides just how everything was set up and the live music, all of the vegan and vegetarian friendly food options. It was about 50% of the offerings in at the space. That really stood out to me. I am not a vegan or a vegetarian. I have been in a past life. I do think that in markets and farmers markets that that's where they can always improve. And the city park farmers market just totally gets it right. Place to watch the game. I don't know which game we're talking about, but definitely for baseball, if you're not inside Coors Field, McGregor's Plaza, go check that place out. Their food hall still is getting tenants. So it's not as uh, robust in terms of occupancy in the food hall, but the the actual space is amazing. I have to say, I keep going back, I keep checking out as um, retail is added into it, as restaurants are being added into it. I love it. I think it's wonderful. They have different activities and movies and um, an outdoor plaza inside the middle of the plaza. Just check it out. Wine bar, the wilds. A lot of people in town are familiar with Hudson Hill. Well, Hudson Hill, actually, the the group that runs Hudson Hill opened up a new concept called the Wilds. So definitely for wine and for, you know, little appetizers, what have you, or earlier in the, earlier in the day, you can just enjoy coffee, go to the Wilds. It's across from Union Station, actually. If you're looking, if you are at Union Station facing east, it's right across the street. New bar in town. So again, I did mention that some of the places that I mentioned on my list opened after the, the 5280 list was curated. But on my list, new bar is MPB, Music, Potions, and Bubbles. It's a bar opened in the Five Points neighborhood. It's also black owned, which I think is pretty awesome. For dining, Wildflower. I'm obsessed with this place. I must go to there. That is a restaurant. It is in a um, new hotel that is in the Lower Highlands, Low High area. So definitely check it out. Bakery, Tokyo Premium Bakery. I literally can't walk past Tokyo Premium Bakery without buying at least three of the incredible Japanese pastries that they make in that place. It is always making money. It, they are busy. People love them. They are obsessed. Like myself, I love Tokyo Premium Bakery. Ice cream, Heaven Creamery. So this one's interesting because they have a location down south, like in Parker or somewhere. And I'm like, I don't want to go to Parker. It's too far. If I'm going to drive, I'm going to drive to the mountains. I'm not necessarily going to go south. <laughs> Maybe I'll just keep going to like Colorado Springs. But anyway, no shade to Parker. Every time I would see Heaven Creamery's Instagram feed, I would be like, I'm going to make an exception and I'm going to get lost in Parker and I'm going to find these people because I'm obsessed. Happily, they've opened a location, a second location in Cherry Creek. Thank God. And I am obsessed. If you're vegan or you can't have milk, you're lactose intolerant, they've got a whole bunch of options for you. But the coolest thing, and I'm so excited about this as we slowly but surely get out of summer, let's kick summer to the curb. In fact, the, the day that I'm recording this episode, there was a snow report 
in the mountains, significant for this time of year amount of snow. So anyway, Heaven Creamery has a coffee item that it it serves where there's a cloud of cotton candy nestled above it and the heat makes the cotton candy melt down so the sugar drips into your coffee. All I know is I'm obsessed with that drink and I cannot wait to have it. Donuts, Third Culture Bakery and happily they also opened up a secondary location in Rhino. Not only do they have incredible donuts, their mochi muffins and and other like delicious baked deliciousness. Quite honestly, Third Culture has the best matcha latte in the city. They're, hands down. There's no doubt about it. There's no like, let's debate on this. It just does. So I'm just telling you now, you need to go there. Vegan food. There are two that stand out. And the key with these vegan places is meat eaters have to love it. Like they can't go there and be like, oh my God, it's, it's vegan. And I'm so hungry. Ugh. You know, basically somebody people, which I'm obsessed with, Oh my God, Somebody People is so amazing. They call their food plant forward. It is a vegan place, but I understand why they call it plant forward because it's a whole new level. It's fine dining, basically, or elevated dining that happens to just be all plant-based. You got to try it out. Then there's Pianti Pizzeria. The second location is actually close to Somebody People. The first location is in Breckenridge. I spent a lot of time in Breckenridge. For some reason, I haven't been to I don't I think somehow it, I missed that this was located there as well but definitely check those out coffee shops Ziggy's I actually really agree with Ziggy's being on this list I actually think that Ziggy's does not get enough love in the metro and that not enough people get out of Denver proper because if you get out of Denver or at least go to Colorado Mills you would enjoy a Ziggy's experience or downtown Longmont. I think it's downtown Longmont has a store as well. But what I love about them is they also provide a espresso bean with their drinks. I just love it. It's like those little things and they have lots of drinks with whipped cream and chocolate deliciousness. It's just, it's such a treat. So I love Ziggy's. I, I love the service. It's just a great place to go. Then there's Unravel Coffee. Unravel has three locations. I've been to two of them. I feel like the third is in Vail. I've been to the location here in Denver. I've been to the location in Breckenridge. Actually, when I'm in Breckenridge, I only go there for coffee. Unravel is phenomenal. There's actually a list of coffee shops in Denver that are so good that never make this list. This is the reason why I get frustrated, but Unravel, they're amazing. They're in a weird location but it's worth going to because it's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful space and really good coffee and things to eat. Delhi, Rye Society, totally agreed. Place to get dessert. People, have you not been to the inventing room yet? I have a friend who is crazy obsessed with them. Like to the point where it's, it's an unnatural love, they go so often. The inventing room, besides being a wonderful place to go on date night, it's also a wonderful place to, to go experience something fun with your friends, your family, your kids, just a unique dessert experience. Check it out. They're making magic at the inventing room. Bottle shop, Divino, wine and spirits. I want to also add Molly's. Molly's, Molly's is awesome. It's massive. It's worth the trip out to Lakewood to check it out over by Lakeside Amusement Park. So definitely check Molly's out as well. Food trucks. Okay. So there are three that really stand out to me. And actually there's four. I'm going to add a vegan one. There's Juan Wonton. Totally agreed with the list on that. There's, and I don't speak Mayan. So I am not going to say this right. There's Chitabe Yucateco. I did not say that right. There's a link in the show notes, but that is Yucatan food, basically. I can't shout it out enough. Just want, want to let you know. There's adobo, which is Mexican plus Filipino food. It's a combined uh, kind of fusion situation. It's absolutely delicious. Burger, cherry cricket, you can't go wrong. Totally agreed with the 5280 list. Distillery, the Block Distilling Co. If you are in Rhino, check it out. It's a wonderful experience, really nice people, great liquors. And also if you're looking to give 
a bottle of, of liquor <laughs> as a gift, this is the place I recommend because their bottles, the marketing, like how everything is put together is stunning. So definitely check it out. Brunch mimosas. This is also a black owned business. It is located in five points as well. So if you are looking for brunch, go to mimosas noodles. This one business is located in Aurora. However, word on the street is they do have a food truck. I don't know if it's running yet, but I know that 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 is something that's happening because I did, I do kind of look at their social media because I'm obsessed with them and they also have a fermented tea leaf salad. I love salad a lot. I think about salad a lot. And honestly, this is one of those salads. I still, I just, sometimes I'll be doing a thing like hiking and I'm like, damn, that's salad. Or I'll be like walking around the park. Damn, that's salad. I'll be walking downtown. Damn, that's salad. I'm just saying, if you've never tried their fermented tea leaf salad, try it out. If you're looking for Czech food, check out, ha <laughs> ha. The pun. That's awesome. The Kalachi House Bakery. It's out in Lakewood. Delicious. Really cool place to go. That's not a place you want to eat if you're on a diet. And that's okay because carbs can be your friend. I'm just saying. They can be your friend. So the Kalachi uh, Bakery House. Middle Eastern food. Softa. Um, softa. And just basically, I love everything about the Source Hotel and the Source Retail Facility. Everything about it. But definitely check out Softa. Softa is not cheap. Okay. So this is, this is on your, I want high level Middle Eastern food. So just saying it's an experience. Food halls. Again, I did mention junction food and drink, but Zeppelin station people don't, you know, about Zeppelin station. I literally don't understand why it's not teeming with people outside of COVID, but before COVID hit, I, I thought that it wasn't as busy as it could have been. So I do think that this is a place that people need to know about. I want people in the travel blogger space to know about it so that when they come here, they check these places out. Shopping, places to shop or just, you know, buy stuff. Tattered cover, but specifically the McGregor Square location. It's a weird, awkward configuration and that gives it its charm. I was actually really concerned about that location because I thought it would be like sterile and like a box. It isn't. It's wonderful. I love it so much. So definitely check it out. They brought the old furniture and fixtures from the 16th street location over to that location. So anyway, definitely check it out. It's beautiful. If you're looking to buy sage, as I do often because I had to sage my life, my home, and just so many things going on in the past year. Go to Alchemy Ritual Goods in Five Points. It is a Black-owned business. It's really an awesome space. Get your sage on and other items as well. If you're looking for metaphysical items, go to Ritual Craft. Again, a wonderful space. The people who work there are actual practicing witches typically, and so they can help you with whatever you would like to know around that practice. Colorado swag. There are two places that you must check out aside from the ones that you always hear about. So there's abstract, which is on Santa Fe. I want to say seventh and Santa Fe. And it's where I finally found my favorite. Tell me you're from Colorado without telling me you're from Colorado t-shirt. It's with Lucifer and the big blue bear looking like mantra and godzilla duking it out i'm super excited about this t-shirt i love it if you are wanting a t-shirt similar to that definitely go to abstract and then there's axles i absolutely love axles but axles has something that's so unique so cool people don't talk about it enough because i don't think they know about it if you go to their warehouse location this is not the location at cherry creek mall this is their warehouse on Santa Fe. They have what's called the break room. It's kind of like a speakeasy, but for clothing. <laughs> and so it's a whole experience where there's a hidden room. So definitely go there, get your Colorado, Colorado swag and have that experience. Then there is Rise Westwood Collective. I'm obsessed with them. I'm obsessed with a lot of these places, okay? But this is why I wanted to share them so, so much. Like I wanted people to get 
to know about these places so they could be obsessed too. So Rise Westwood Collective is in the west side of town. I would almost say, no, not the north side. It's the west side of town. What I love about this space, what first of all, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. There is a chocolate tier located there. All of the retailers are Mexican-American. It is a Hispanic space. There aren't enough of them in this town. Uh, just like there aren't enough of, uh, there aren't enough black spaces. I want us to support Risewood, R- Rise Westwood Collective. It's awesome. The food's great. And they have a market once a month. The market changes, the theme changes. So definitely go to their website, check it out and go and support it. The lines are long too. So people on that side of town know about it, but I feel like people in Park Hill or Wash Park or even Low High may not be aware of it. So I want you to know. Northside Market, check that out. Check it out as well. And then I want you to buy all of your snacks for those moments when you've got to snack on something bad, but it tastes oh so good at It's a Bodega. It's also black owned as well, but It's a Bodega is a place with all things that you snack on, good, bad, and ugly. Tim Tams, potato chips, Pocky, like anything you can think of, but it's like a snack food that you would find at a really cool curated bodega. And since Colorado basically doesn't have them, I think that the owner just was like, look, it's a bodega. (laughs) Definitely check it out. It is close to the capital area in downtown. Sports, outdoors, and fitness. Outdoor community, hands down. Now this is very specific for me outdoor afro outdoor afro i cannot tell you enough for people of color who are looking to go outdoors and experience it outdoor afro second one is trails and ales wonderful group as well i think that the meetup groups in general in denver and across the state are really active a lot of fun but those for outdoor communities really stand out fitness class please for the love of god support this class. It's amazing. It's amazing. If you like hip hop and you like dance and you like fitness and you're like, Michelle, I I don't have any kind of rhythm or I'm new to dance. It doesn't matter. Everyone can take this class. It's called Groove 3. And the instructor that I'm going to share with you is Mikey. I have another instructor that I love, but she just had a baby and I don't really know when she's going to start teaching again. So um, when she does, I will add it to the list. But right now my friend is, you know, like recovering (laughs) because having a baby is a lot of work. So anyway, Groove 3 with Mikey, I will have a link in there as well. It is an incredible class. You got to go. Ski Resort. Winter Park is obvious just because the ski train, like you can't go wrong with the ski train. And then Echo Mountain for night skiing. And then an honorable mention, I as we were ta- as I'm talking, I'm like, "Huh. Honorable mention is Eldora. I love Eldora. By Netherland, Ned for all of us who grew up near Netherland. It's just a fun little quirky little mountain town with a ski resort with actually very steep runs. So those are the three I love. Online fitness classes, Fit and New. Fit and New is a black owned exercise studio that is located in Aurora, Colorado. They are amazing. So definitely make sure you check out what they are up to. And then Yoga Studio. This is also a black owned, black and brown owned studio as well. Urban Sanctuary. The classes are off the chain. Amazing. So definitely check it out. And then finally, we have services. Florist, Pickle Town. Pickle Town's amazing. I love everything that they do. The last time I went to their location downtown, they had a puppy and that puppy, oh my God, it was obsessed. I hope that puppy's still there. Anyway, Pickle Town, amazing. I love them. They're just, uh, love them. Black and Blossomed. So Black and Blossomed, as you could imagine, is a Black-owned business, and they actually host pop-up events. So that is a place that you should check out their website so you know where those pop-up events are being hosted. New Hotel, Lifehouse. So earlier in this list, I talked about Wildflower. Wildflower is the restaurant inside of Lifehouse. So definitely check it out. Spa, you can't go wrong with beer spa. Everyone loves beer spa. 
I even like beer and I'm like, dang, beer spa. Luckily at the beer spa, they also offer cider because I, I just, I don't like beer, but I do like cider anyway. And then there's the Ispa spa. It's a Russian Banyan spa where they beat you with these branches. <laughs> it's like very invigorating. And I, I want to bring up this spa because the old location that we all know and love, if you, if you're familiar with this business was damaged by smoke. So they reopened a smaller facility. So I want to just make sure that people know about this and that they go and check it out. And then there's bathhouse. So if you're afraid to be naked uh, and you were afraid to go there before, you can go there now because you can basically schedule your own time, which I think is kind of awesome. I think that it's really affordable given that it's your own time slot, but it's nice because then you have a whole, you're not dealing with a whole bunch of people during the Corona. So I love that they now have this as an option and it's just a cool facility that's been in Denver for a billion years. And you can just steam out all, all your toxins. You can just steam out all your toxins. What would you add to this list that I didn't? I did want to mention one other place, which is Free Market, which is where Pickle Town is located. And Free Market is kind of a, it's, it's like a California vibe situation. It is on the, it's located in the dairy block. Super cool place. I hope you guys enjoyed this list. A lot of neat and cool things are happening in Denver, but everything is happening so fast and so many places have closed that it's hard to keep track of it all. So please do check it out. There's also a pop-up event at Civic Center Park called Bar Civic. It's a pop-up happy hour bar. So definitely also check that out as well. So have fun.